Are you a good person? Have you ever lied? What happens after someone dies? You ever stolen anything? Trust is life. A teenage boy named Joseph Smith Jr. said he had a vision while he was praying in the woods. According to the official account, he said he was visited in the 1820s by God the Father and Jesus Christ, who told him that Christianity had become corrupt, that all the churches were wrong, their creeds were an abomination, and he shouldn't join any of them. Three years later, Joseph was visited by an angel named Moroni. He told him where to find some golden, buried golden plates that would explain the true gospel and tell him about the history of the American Indians. These plates were supposedly written in reformed Egyptian. So he had to translate them into English, and the result eventually became known as the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. Mormonism began in Palmyra, New York in the 1820s. Joseph Smith said that God chose him to restore the true church in North America and officially launched the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. His followers are known as Mormons, and they have taught some very interesting things, such as that if it weren't for Joseph Smith, nobody would be saved. If it had not been for Joseph Smith and the Restoration, there would be no salvation. There is no salvation outside the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormons get their beliefs from five main sources. The Book of Mormon, which Joseph Smith said is the most correct of any book on earth. Second, the Doctrine and Covenants, which is a book mostly about theology. Third, the Pearl of Great Price. Fourth, the King James Bible, insofar as it is translated correctly, which for the average Mormon means the Bible cannot be trusted entirely. But the ultimate authority in the Mormon church comes from the living Mormon apostles and prophets, especially the president, who is considered to be the voice of God on earth, kind of like a Mormon pope. And he can overturn any teaching of a previous president, which is not uncommon. Let's now look at what they teach about God. Joseph Smith said, in what's called the King Follett Funeral Discourse, one of his last teachings before uh, he was uh, killed in the Carthage jail, he said, we have imagined and supposed that God has been God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. When he refuted the idea that God had eternally been God, he forever separated his followers from biblical Christianity. Until Mormonism can repudiate that belief, there is no way that Mormonism can even begin to consider biblical Christianity. And so when we talk about the biblical Jesus, we have to step back and say, first we start with an eternal God, who in Psalm 90 verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou without form the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So when we talk about Jesus being God, and we point to the passages on the deity of Christ, which a Mormon will accept, they believe Jesus is a God. He is the God of the Old Testament, just a different God than Elohim. They have two different gods at that point. We need to emphasize we are talking about an eternal God who created all things, who is not himself created. He is not himself one of the spirits of men. Interestingly enough, Mormons believe that Jesus is Jehovah. And yet when you go in the Old Testament, Jehovah creates the spirits of men, Zechariah 12.1. And yet in Mormonism, he is one of the spirits of men. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul, uh, Paul describes Jesus and says that he is the creator of all things. Visible, invisible, principalities, powers, dominions, and authorities, all things created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things exist, consist, hold together. And yet in Mormonism, Jesus obviously was not the one who created the planet that his father lived on when he was a man, or the God before him, or the God before him. And so they have to limit these descriptions of Jesus to just having relevance to this planet. Elohim was once a man who lived on another planet. And he went through a pro process of, of following the gospel there. He was deemed worthy. And when he died, he was resurrected with his wives, organized this world. Notice I did not say created because the Mormon God cannot create anything ex nihilo, out of nothing or into nothing. He can only organize pre-existing matter. But he organized this earth. 
and he begets spirit children with his wives. The first begotten of his spirit children was Jehovah or Jesus. We all are the spirit brothers of Jesus. Each one of us, you and I, we were also begotten by Elohim and one of his heavenly wives in a spiritual pre-existence. Another one of the offspring of Elohim was Lucifer. Is Jesus the spirit brother of Lucifer and you and you and me? Yes. Was Jesus Lucifer's brother? Yes. Okay, and, and as you are his brother. And Lucifer's brother? As you are Jesus' brother as well. We're all children of our Heavenly Father. In the pre-mortal spirit life, Jesus, Lucifer, and all of us were the spirit children of God and his wives. The Bible clearly warns against preaching another Jesus, and that Satan himself can appear to us as an angel of light. Remember what Joseph Smith said. He said it was an angel clothed in light that gave him another testament. According to the Bible, it is crucial that we have the true Jesus and the true gospel. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ, and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. What does the Mormon Church teach about heaven and hell? In Mormonism, there is almost a universal salvation. They believe almost everyone will go to heaven. But there are a few people that they believe actually go to an eternal hell that becomes sons of perdition. The extremes of hell, I think very few people actually go there. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's different degrees in heaven. There's different degrees of uh, spiritual prison or hell. So in a nutshell, Mormons believe that almost everyone goes to some form of heaven. There are three levels of heaven, according to Mormonism, and Mormons want to go to the top level where they can become their own God and with their wives produce lots of spirit babies. And the bottom level is for non-Mormons, for Hitler, for murderers, rapists, child molesters, liars and thieves. Just a moment. Hitler gets to go to a low-level heaven? Who then goes to hell? Well... Mormons call hell outer darkness, and that's primarily reserved for the devil and his angels and a few apostate Mormons. Hitler might actually qualify for the low level of heaven, which Joseph Smith said is so wonderful that if a man could get a glimpse into that low level heaven, he would be tempted to commit suicide to get there. <laughs> 